Hello, welcome to North Georgia Business Radio X, the radio show that spotlights interesting and successful business leaders in this area. And also that includes nonprofits because they do a great job in making our community better and stronger and a greater place to live. I'm Bill Lampton, the biz communication guy, hosting today without my regular co-host, Bo Henderson. Bo is in Tampa this week. And if you've been following Bo on Facebook, you know that he's been directing many helpful seminars on Social Security, retirement, financial planning. His career has really blossomed, and I'm very happy for him. Always great to co-host with him, happy to take care of the show today, hosting, and I'm benefiting from great assistance from Joy Allgood, our producer, a vital part of our show every week. Our guest today is Pierre, excuse me, Carrie Pierre-Lise from Lawrenceville, Georgia, and he's the founder and CEO of You Are Not the Only One. What an intriguing title. Carrie, welcome to the show. Yes. Thank you, Bill. Thank you for having me. I am honored to be featured at Radio X. Well, we want to hear about you are not the only one. I mean, that's a common phrase. You didn't invent the phrase, but you're really making something out of it. So how and when and why did you decide to start something like this? Now, you are not the, I want to talk about the origin of it because in the very beginning, like around year 2016, so about maybe three years ago, um, I wanted to create an Instagram page, an anonymous Instagram page called I Cry Myself to Sleep. And the interesting part about that is, um, you know, my, I was going through a time in my life where I was very afraid to put myself out there, put my feelings and thoughts out there. So it was going to be a, a place where I, write, I would write down my thoughts in a journal take a picture of it, and post it on social media. But what Facebook does is it, it lets you know what your Instagram fran- fans, friends are doing. So when I created the page, it told my Facebook friends, Carrie created an anonymous page called I Cry Myself to Sleep. So I had to throw that idea away. <laughs> so I sat down with myself and I was like, okay, uh, instead of just writing down my thoughts, let me create a page where... Not only I can share my perspective and my stories, but a place where everyone can come and say, well, here's my story, here's my testimony, and you are not the only one. And what fueled just that thought alone was the idea that I had friends out there who felt like they were alone in their battles. I felt like I was alone in in my battles, and I figured I, I can't be the only one. And not only did I know that, I believed that, and after... 20, 30, 40 stories later, I started to realize that we are all going through a similar situation, and that situation is pain and um, tribulations of any sort. Are the stories all about uh, troubles people are having, or do they also write about their triumphs? Now, I have very few, and that's what's interesting right now, because we are living in this world where social media is very powerful, everything's in your face, and we are surrounded by people who are who have more broken stories than they have triumph stories and um and even though they may have a triumph story like winning uh something or overcoming a certain particular part in their lives there is still an emptiness inside them that caused them to not be able to enjoy that triumph so what's beautiful about um the organization is not only does it put a magnifying glass on uh what's beneath the surface but uh but uh it allows those triumph stories to feel real when we when we start at that bottom when we start at that point of brokenness and really find that true healing to even enjoy these triumph stories yes we do have true triumph stories where people actually do enjoy their lives and and they did overcome a certain struggle but very few and i feel like that's why we need you are not the only one it seems to me that there are many people who probably have nowhere else to vent their feelings. There's no one else who will listen. They feel alone and isolated. 
And so that's probably one of the great contributions mm. that your Facebook page is offering. I went to your group today and joined. I, I that's awesome. Invited, uh, I asked to join, and you yeah. responded very quickly. As I browsed over the page, I got a sense of people who were happy to have someone to share their story with. It wasn't anything they were ashamed of or mm. apologetic about. And they had, in one way, something of a release, a catharsis by yeah. sharing the story. But in addition, they were able to look at other people's stories. Yeah. And that's when you recognize, hey, I'm not an oddball. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I'm not the only person who feels this way. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Right. That is, that's what it's all about. And, um, yeah, I'm glad you saw that. And I'm hoping that people who are, are you know, just browsing through the group like you were uh, can see that. Because I have gotten calls from members of that group who are, you know, a little iffy about sharing you know, personal things like that. And it is a beautiful thing to have a place to share because uh, sometimes therapy doesn't work. Uh, the church doesn't work. Uh, sometimes it's hard to tell your story to families because they know you so well, so you're afraid to be judged. So I think a private group like that and, how, and the reason why it's so powerful is that people are able to come um, and almost... Uh, share their story like you're talking to your coworker. They don't really know you personally, but you could talk about your private life and just go on about your day. But it's just really good to be able to release something that you've been holding on or that they've been holding on for decades. Something that just occurred to me is uh, many people who travel for a living, for their business and they're on airplanes a yeah. lot, they will talk to a stranger yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and tell their story where they probably wouldn't do it with someone else. But right. a stranger, they feel they're not going to see that person again. They, right. they won't be judged by them. Exactly. And, and this is what you're providing. And I think one thing we need to underscore here, Carrie, is that it's a private group. Yes. And in a sense, it's confidential in that only a select group can see it. As i Remember, you have, a, uh, what, 330 members or something yeah, now? Yeah, about 320. Um, yes, a, ve a very private group, uh, and only the members who are in the group are able to see the conversations and any deep thoughts that you share. I liked a uh, photo of you on there where you're wearing a necklace, <laughs> and the necklace is a broken heart yeah. with stitches. Yes. And you say, what is stronger than a heart that has endured? Mm. So a part of your purpose is to help people endure when they have broken hearts, disappointments, shattered dreams, unfulfilled wishes. You know... Um I, I, don't, I don't know if Bruce Lee, if I've learned that from the Bruce Lee movies, but I know when you break a bone and it heals, it heals back stronger. I, when you look at life and when you go about life and life could be perfect for you and th the worst thing to happen at an, a, a late age is to go through a tribulation that you've never um, even come across before in your life, that fall would be so hard to take because uh, a heart that's never been broken or feelings that's never been uh, tampered with or anything, it, it's it's easy for that to just fall apart when there's, there's no uh, lessons or foundation underneath that. So a broken heart with stitches, that's a lot of us. That's everybody, um, I believe, uh, because we've all overcome some sort of uh, tribulation some, somewhere in our lives. And... Uh, what this logo represents is, is 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 strength because once you have these stitches are not ugly marks they're not failures but it's to help people understand that you are way stronger than you think and uh, with those stitches um, you can you can uh, make and move accordingly in your life um, to where you can prevail through whatever future tribulations that may come your way. I'm curious, do you have any well-known writers or thinkers or speakers who have influenced you and led you to start this movement? Um, nothing that comes to the top of my head. Uh, I, I just, I, when, I, when I think about someone inspirational, I think of Gandhi, I think of Martin Luther King, I think of people who just have so much passion because uh, a, 
a heart with passion, you don't, I almost believe that you don't necessarily need to be book smart because smart, because passion just overcome any type of knowledge because when the, when a, when a heart is burning with passion you are fearless you are not afraid to speak you stand up for things that people are not are afraid to stand up for you give people a voice um, and I see that in uh, Martin Luther King I see that in Gandhi I see that in a lot of other inspirational speakers um, but no one in particular but uh, just life itself has been an inspiration into inspiration to me and your group you don't have any so far, no professional therapist. Yeah. These these are lay people. They're mm-hmm. not uh, they're not credentialed. They're sharing their stories with each other. Yeah. And so, why is it the peer to peer reaction does help those who share their stories and and listen to other people's stories? Yeah. Um, when when you when you think about stories, and I love that word. When you when we go and we read a book, we see a part of the world that uh, we have never seen before, and that's that's the beautiful thing about stories. It takes you to different places, and even though you may be living in this in, in the world called Carrie or in the world called Bill and the world called Joy, you can only see so much. But when you sit down and you hear the story of another person, you see so much more of the world, and Bringing and the reason why I don't have a therapist as an admin or someone who think they, they they could have it all is because when you sit, the idea is not to sit in front of somebody who think they have it figured out, but the idea is to see the world in a bigger view, in a in a much larger view by listening listening to people that are similar to you or not even well similar in some ways, of course, in regards to pain, but. How they see the world is different, and when you have that peer-to-peer conversation, uh, it's it's just a beautiful thing where you can sit back and realize, oh, it's a much bigger world out there. There's something. There's so much more f- beyond me to understand, and I get to come and share my world as I listen and hear about other people's worlds instead of coming and hearing about solutions to a particular problem that they may not truly know the answer to. Let's apply this to the world of business. We're a business radio show. Yes. My viewpoint on this is that in the world of business, yeah. if we want to be highly productive, mm-hmm. we have to have our emotions stable. Oh, yes. We have to have a balanced view of life. Yes. We have to be open to change and challenge. And yes. so what you're driving at is not just to assist people personally, but they will be very likely to have greater careers, greater contributions to uh, their industry, uh, be better team players, better in sales. So we're we're not just talking about something personal here necessarily. No, we're talking, this is, this is such a world changer. What, what people don't, um, I mean, I'm, I'm sure we do realize this. Our pain that we go through holds us back in life. It affects your work, affects how you uh, co- communicate with your family, your friends, how you love, how you trust. It's a domino effect. Someone who's been rejected all their lives are going to be hesitant in the future to make bold moves or bold remarks or even apply a certain change. There are people out there who are way more powerful than they, than they think, but because of what they've been through, through, they settle for less. And these guys are business are, are, are entrepreneurs, people who create business and things like that. They can, even though that they're doing great things, those who are in that position, there's so much more greater things that they can do if they understand their potential and the truth about them. Not only business uh, uh, makers, but also employees and, and, and whatever work that field that you work at, school or anything. This reminds me of the the studies on emotional intelligence. Yeah. And the fact that um, IQ, I was very happy to find out, (laughs) (laughs) IQ does not have a direct correlation to success. In Mm. fact, uh, Daniel Goldman in his book says that it... It ranges somewhere between four to I think twenty four percent of of um, the reason people might succeed. The reason people succeed is because of their emotional intelligence, mm. their emotional balance, 
And as you just indicated, somebody who goes to work with a heavy burden yes. in their life, yes. whether it's financial or marital stress or yes. their own illness or sickness of a child, those type things are going, you just don't put those aside as you walk into the work, the office, you know. You cannot. It's part of you. It's who you are. We are uh, uh, an acute, we are, uh, our whole self is what we've been through. We take pieces of our life and we come and what I and what I'm looking at right now is what uh, you've overcome is what your challenges are is, is your truths and your doubts I am looking at a person who uh, has a story we're not just a person where uh, that that is void and empty but what we are filled with is is our stories and we can't put our stories and our identity aside when we go into a workplace or when we're talking to our wife or our kids or our friends. So when we share our thoughts and our opinions, we are pulling from the, uh, the things that we've been through. Um, if, if, uh, if I come, if you come to someone and you're, and you're asking for advice, all they can give you is uh, what they know. And what they know is is in the world that they live in. And if you're asking for, uh, a person who's been rejected all their lives or who um, uh, has uh, very low self esteem, that's what you that's the advice you'll get. Um, there'll be warnings. There, it won't be bold. It won't be nothing where yeah, go for it. It'll be like hey, think about this. Um, so yeah, you cannot put n any of that aside when you come to a workplace or when you're dealing with anything. All of this reminds me of something that uh, I'm sure you've seen on Facebook. Be kind to everybody. You never know what they're you going never through. never know what they're going through. Man, like, I, I remember seeing this uh, video that went viral on Facebook, and I was just so broken. Um, this this girl calls McDonald's and asks her, asks McDonald's, hey, are, are the cookies made? This is something very small. Are the cookies warm or whatever? And they say yes. She pulls up to the drive-thru, and apparently they didn't have any more cookies. This girl has a fit. She starts to really disrespect the um, the person at the window. It was an older woman um, throwing things at her and cursing her out. All of that. She was on Facebook doing that. And it, what is I, this I, the one she tried to pull the person into the car? I saw one like that. Man, I don't know what I, don't, I, I can't remember the details of it. It was so long ago. But I, I was watch, as I was watching it, I was like, man, what if that woman at home had a kid who had a disease or something or maybe just lost her wife i mean uh, her husband or something you, you don't know what people are going through but because of your hurt you decide to um x all of that out and just put out your feelings at that moment about it um it's it's it was just hurtful to see and yeah you never know because everyone is going through a story got time for just one more question and then we'll close it out by asking you to tell us how to get in touch with you yes I like the uh, the acronym for you are not the only one, Yantu, Y-A-N-T-O-O. -O. <laughs> that's, that's rather easy to remember. Yes. Tell us in closing, how is the idea about the meaning of love, how mm -hmm. is that critical to your mission? Love, when I think about the word love, I think of the word selflessness. And selflessness, the definition is in itself – um, when you are doing something selflessly, putting yourself in that equation puts you at risk of, uh, of, uh, to a point where you, where, where, where it's just toxic. That's just the word for it. And the word love is so important because when you start to love the right way selflessly when you start to love selflessly and you remove yourself from that equation then you don't put yourself in this place where you feel like you need to receive because when you start to feel like you need to receive the same then you then you come to a point where you may stop doing what you're doing because you're not receiving the same thing and now i want to just share this really quick i know we got uh, just a little bit of time um, I have a friend who called me up and said, a oh, man care, you know what? I, I'm not going to call and check on anybody anymore because um, I don't get they, they don't come and check on me. And I'm like, man, that's 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 t you can fall into a toxic place there. People are looking forward to your calls 
And um, if you stop doing that, there are people out there, and I'm going to share this story, and there's a second story that I want to put together. Um, There are people out there who need these kind of calls and need a heart like yours. Because I have another friend who told me that she was stopped in the middle of the road, and I love sharing this story, where she was trying to flag some people down. She had her kids in the back seat, and uh, someone finally stopped, and she, you know, wanted some gas. The guy goes and gets gas for her, comes back, and of course some other people pulled up, um, and he tells her, hey, um, I'm actually on my way home to commit suicide, randomly. And I'm guessing this was his last act of love. And he uh, says he says this, and she grabs him by the arm, say what she could say, and you know he kind of drifted off because you know the commotion and everything. Uh, l- later, she gets a phone call from her mom saying, "Hey, you actually saved my son's life because you showed that you cared." Now let's put these two stories together. Let's take a girl who stops, who quits, um, giving uh, calls because she feels like she's not receiving the same. Where they, we need someone, pe- there are people like that guy who have lost, uh, who almost lost his life because people are not checking in. So, yes, love is very important, and that is the fuel for this organization. And if we do it the right way, we can really make things happen. Carrie, this is a fascinating conversation, and it's one that's very much needed, yes. whatever business we are in. So, I know people will be interested in looking at your Facebook group and also in getting in touch with you. So tell us, please, how to do that. Go on Facebook and in all caps, no spaces, type in you are not underscore the only one. Um, go on Instagram too as well and type in you are not underscore the only one, all caps or lowercase, it doesn't matter. And the logo is a heart with stitches, a red heart with black stitches. You can find us on Facebook and on Instagram. Thank you so much. And thank those of you who joined us today on North Georgia Business Radio X. Be with us again next week. This is Bill Lampton.